But the bottom line is we need to feel successful at what we're doing. Whether it's our home, marriages, our families, our work, we need to feel successful, at least by degree. It doesn't mean we have to be the best in the world. We need to feel like we are doing a good job and being successful. And some people think, well, you know, how can you be successful at homemaking? You absolutely can. Where you feel like your home is running smoothly. If you've ever had that feeling, like, everything's working here. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel where we talk about all things that have to do with femininity and building strong relationships. I am Cherry Lynn and I am here with Dixie Andal and Forsyth. Hi. Hi, Cherry. So today we are here to talk about, we're calling it, what makes women tick? So what is that? What exactly does that mean? Well, you know, in, in today's world, especially uh, with all the gender blurring and all that, a lot of women don't really understand women, us. And what is important to us? What, what makes us afraid? What makes us feel secure? And there's different needs for men a little bit than women with these primary needs. And when you understand, as you learn to understand yourself, women in general, when something happens that is maybe threatens some of that security, you'll understand why you feel anxiety. It doesn't mean that if you don't have all these things in your life at right now, something's terribly wrong with you because you're just joining a giant club of all of us. You know, we're all w working on these and the way life is set up, we're not going to have all these perfectly all the time, but it's important to understand what they are so that you won't be actually, it's, I'm meaning it so that you won't be hard on yourself. Okay. So we have, how, how many things do we have today? We're touching on seven points, right? Mm -hmm. Start with number one. Number one is to be loved and adored. Now, men like to be loved too, but it's more important that they feel successful and competent and admired. But for women, being loved and feeling like they are they have somebody that really loves them is really important. And that's why we tend to be so relationship-oriented. And so, and so when you understand that, th that's why women buy all the self-help books, mm -hmm. because we're trying to achieve this. And if you don't have this, the level that you'd like in your life, you're not alone. And there's things you can do about that and primarily fascinating womanhood. The second one is to nurture. And whether you, and I say to nurture because not all women have children. Not all women can have children. And not all women like me, my children are grown and they're not little. And you still nurture people in different ways. We nurture our relationships with others, our relationship with our spouses, and everybody. So our need to nurture, whether you are, are a mother or not, is very important to women. Animals too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I left that out. Animals. <laughs> That's it's true. Yeah. Weird. And some men are, are get into that too. In fact, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I have a brother who, <laughs> it sounds funny now, he, he had a hard time deciding whether to go to raise cattle or go into medicine completely different, <laughs> completely different. And so my, my mother wisely told him, well, if you become a medical doctor, you can still raise cattle. But if you raise cattle, you cannot do medicine on the side. That's what he did. So, okay. The number three. Number, number three. three. To feel secure and safe. Uh, that means uh, physically, financially, and emotionally. Now, sometimes we struggle with these, and, and not all of them, always all our lives but periodic times. And when you realize that's one of your needs, you'll think, oh, no wonder I feel this because this is one of my needs. And I really, I, I don't know about you, probably you too, I really get nervous when any of those things are not in place. It's a real trigger. I just want to clarify too with you, when you say security and feeling safe, this isn't just about money because I think a lot of women could be watching this and thinking like, that that means that women are superficial and they need to have a certain amount of funds. And that's not necessarily what we're talking about. It's about, to me, what you're saying is it's about that security of things are taken care of. Not, not worried about where your next meal is coming from is, is hard for women. And physically, if you live in a part of the United States where there's sometimes tornadoes, Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Now, it's not like some people love it, but I know some people, particularly men, who get 
kind of excited when there's a tornado warning because they think it's interesting. They don't really feel danger. I don't mm -hmm. like it. I don't like anything to do with it. So physical danger, whether it's locked, making sure all your doors are locked at night because you don't want burglars or anybody else coming in. Financially, where you're constantly worried that your husband isn't going to have a job. And then there's emotionally, where you're, there's no security that, you, that things aren't just going to be rocky like this all the time. I think this is a big one, too, because this is statistically the, the research that I've done about you know couples and what they tend to argue about. Money is one of the number one, I think it is the number one thing that couples argue about. And this is something important for us to understand about ourselves, like you said earlier, because if women understand, okay, we're arguing about this because this is one of my things. This is one of my... Right. Then you can also, once you understand, you can also think, okay, this is one of my things, but I need to put this in perspective. Just because it's one of my triggers doesn't mean that I have to beat everybody up all around me because I'm trying to get it. You, you have more control over yourself when you understand it. When I was about three years old, my, my dad was a dentist when I was little, and he went into business later. He was sick in bed, and I remember the bed looking really huge. I remember going in the bedroom and saying, who's going to earn the living when I was three? And I, my parents laughed, and I thought, what's so funny? <laughs> but it's because even then I was worried about, the stability. I think that's very, that to me hits, hits home with the security and feeling safe. It's like, I just have this need. And a lot of women have this need to just feel stable. It's not necessarily that they need to be rich or they need to feel, you know, all these material things. It's more about that stability. Yeah. It's, it's not that, it's not that men don't care about those things, but they're not the triggers. The next one, number we four, want, we want to feel attractive no matter our age, no matter our age. And that's why the, the makeup industry is so huge and the hair care industry. And it's not mostly because of men. It's mostly because of us. And there's nothing wrong with this to feel like we need to be attracted. We'd like to. When you get dressed up or you get a new hairstyle or a new outfit or anything and you put it on and you feel attractive, we all know what it feels like to feel attractive. It gives you more confidence to do everything else throughout your day. There's a lot of women who feel, if you feel invalidated for your looks by a family member, even a spouse, and you feel like, for instance, if he is constantly pestering you to lose weight or to, I was thinking of losing weight because it seems to be a real common one for women to. That and just the not, I, for me, it's more about not hearing it. Like women really want to be complimented. Some women, you know, maybe they're, they're not craving it as much as others, but some women just really want to feel like hear that they want to hear that they look, and I know everyone wants to be complimented, but I love that you're bringing up a point of a lot of cause of, you know, contention and arguments in couples. Uh, we see this all the time on our Facebook group. Ladies are like, he never tells me that I look good or he never tells me I look nice. I'm trying so hard. But in understand part of understanding men is also realizing that is because he may be thinking it and doesn't say it, doesn't even realize it's important for you to hear the words. Uh, I know that happened to me. I, when I was uh, young, in my 20s, Bob hardly ever told me I was beautiful. He didn't, and I, I worked and worked on my appearance, and I was young and probably at my best. Later, he said, well, I thought I did. I appreciated it, but I didn't say anything. Men tend to be less verbal. But when you understand that, you cannot take it so personally because other women compliment. We compliment each other. At number five, we need to feel understood and respected. Now, that's not always easy when it comes to men because men and women are very different. But when you realize that feeling inside of you of frustration, you feel, I do not feel understood, you'll know why you have it. It's not, and you won't feel guilty because we also tend to feel guilty a lot to, to be validated. It's probably one of the reasons why we have feminists and because they got so sick of some of the, some of the men out there who didn't understand them and they really wanted this. And but un unfortunately, they've kind of, kind of gone a little bit too far. We need to be validated. And that's one of our primary needs. The next one, uh, number six, we want to feel free to pursue our dream. Now, our dreams can be raising a real good family. Our dreams can be becoming president of our country. They can be all kinds of things. But the bottom line is we need to feel successful at what we're doing, whether it's our home, marriages, our families, 
our work, we need to feel successful, at least by degree. It doesn't mean we have to be the best in the world. We need to feel like we are doing a good job and being successful. And some people think, well, you know, how can you be successful at homemaking? You absolutely can. Where you feel like your home is running smoothly. If you've ever had that feeling, like, everything's working here. <laughs> Instead of I'm always picturing those drawers that I need to to organize again or cupboards or, you know you just think generally I've got things kind of under control that's a great feeling and it's something we can work toward towards and work on the last one is a lifelong one it's the need to have joy to be a happy person and some of that comes from the way you look at things and the need to be grateful be able to be grateful for things no matter what even if you live in a country where there's war, things like that, to find perspective can give you joy. Because the, the way this world is set up, everything isn't going to be like this. At best, life is like this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's kind of like that. To be happy is that means that no matter what happens to us, whether it's illness, moving, insecurities, that uh, positive or negative, we can find a way to be happy. Because some people do it. I know them. And you probably know them. You think, how do they do that? They're not, mm -hmm. they're not people who are not intelligent. Mm -hmm. They're people that have found a way. And that's one of our needs. Because happiness in the end comes from gratitude and perspective. So what about all the ladies out there that are listening to all this and they say, yeah, you know, I do need all those things. And then they're saying, well, I don't have hardly any of those things. Or maybe there's one thing in particular that you don't have that you've always struggled with. What do you have to say to all those ladies? Yeah, well, aren't, there aren't all, <laughs> all of us, right? All of us. Yeah, all of us. Because this is like fascinating womanhood. This is a lifelong pursuit. The most important thing is to realize when you're having these feelings where they're coming from, that you don't need to feel guilty about it. But it also means that you don't have to say, I, I demand and deserve this right now always because these are these a lot of these are processes like the need to have joy that's something we need to work on ourselves it isn't that something that someone else can give us um free to pursue our dreams that part of that is under your control too of doing a good job at whatever you do not all these things like to feel, feel loved and adored what you can do about that is practice the timeless principles of fasting woman. For, I guess, in conclusion, what you're saying, I think this is really great because it's such a positive message that these are all things that you should be aware of. And if there are things that you're struggling with, there are things that we can do to practice these things every day. And we can do more videos on each specific subject. Definitely drop a comment down below if there's a subject that you would love us to dig deeper into as to how to work on it more. We would love to answer any questions. It sounds to me that like this is a really great thing for women to be aware of and to use as kind of a tool. I love that it's a really positive message and I think this is a really great, um, it's a great thing for women to be aware of and men, but. Be, don't be so hard on yourself. This mm -hmm. is part of who women are and it's, it's a great strength and it's a challenge too because we have to learn to manage it. Yes. Thank you so much everyone for watching and Dixie, thank you so much for all of your advice. We always love to hear all that you have to say. So much wisdom and we're here every week. So don't forget to check back with us. And like I said earlier, comment down below if you have any questions for us, we'd love to answer them for you and we will see you next time. Bye. Next time.